Shalom Havarim, James Trim here, and today I want to talk to you <clears throat> about a uh, very interesting Messianic prophecy in the Torah. In uh, Better Sheet or Genesis chapter 49, uh, verses 49 through 12, uh, particularly verses 10 and 11. And uh, so uh, let me uh, initially read this. By the way, back up here, we have handouts for this study. Uh, you can get the handouts by going to the uh, video description and clicking on the uh, link for the handouts. It's a PDF file that you can print out for yourself. Uh, we also need to ask you to please consider donating to support the, the this video channel um, and these videos. Uh, there's a lot of uh, time and effort that goes into this, and um, we need your financial help. These videos are brought to you by you. So you can donate by sending donations by PayPal to donations at wnae.org or by clicking on the donate link in the video description. Um, so please uh, donate. Like I said, uh, we depend entirely on you. Um, Christian denominations and whatnot are not going to support this work. Uh, Jewish organizations, rabbinic Jewish organizations are not going to support this work. Uh, this is a grassroots uh, uh, effort and uh, it depends entirely upon you. Also, you can help by liking this video, by um, uh, uh, subscribing to this video channel. Also, let us know what you think in the comments of our videos. And it's also very important to share these videos on social media uh, so that uh, your friends will see these videos and we can uh, get more uh, viewers that way as well and get these uh, materials and this message out to more people. Um, you can uh, 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 help us in that way as well. All right, so uh, the first page in our handouts gives the actual text of Genesis 49, 9 through 12. It says, Yehuda or Judah, is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you are gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as a lioness. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter, this is verse 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah or from Yehuda, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And unto him shall the obedience of the peoples be binding his foal onto the vine and his ass's colt onto the choice vine he washes his garments in wine and his vesture in the blood of grapes he uh, his eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk now I want to center in on verse 10. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. Um, so we have two sticks here, by the way, which reminds us of Genesis, uh, Genesis of Ezekiel chapter 37 and the two sticks prophecy, uh, where the two sticks represent the two houses of Israel, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And uh, here it says, until Shiloh comes. So what does this phrase, until Shiloh comes, mean? It's a very important phrase. In the Talmud, uh, Babylonian Talmud, page 98b, uh, the Gemara poses the question, what is the Messiah's name? What is the name of the Messiah? And there are several different names that are given. Uh, by different rabbis, and Rabbi Sheila offers the answer, quote, his name is Shiloh, for it is written, until Shiloh comes. Uh, the, uh, the Targums, like all of the Targums, what are the Targums? The Targums are Aramaic paraphrases 
of the books of the uh, of books of the Tanakh. And all of the Targums, uh, Targum Unclos, Targum Pseudo Jonathan, Targum Yerushalayim, in fact, all the Targums I'm aware of uh, for this verse, uh, they all paraphrase. And that's one of the things about the Targums is that they're Aramaic paraphrases. They're not literal translations. Uh, all of them paraphrase instead of until Shiloh comes, as we see in the Hebrew, they par all paraphrase until Messiah comes. So this is very definitely a Messianic prophecy. Speaking of Messiah, it's understood this way in the Targums and in the Talmud, etc. Okay. Um, the word Shiloh, one of the reasons that Shiloh, by the way, Shiloh was where the tabernacle was uh, when it was, when there was, a, before there was a temple and when Israel was in the land, the, the, uh, the tabernacle was kept at Shiloh or stood at Shiloh. Uh, Shiloh has a gematria. Uh, what is a gematria? It's a numerical value. In Hebrew, letters and numbers are the same thing. We don't have separate letters and numbers. All the letters have numerical values, which means that every word also has a numerical value. And um, every word is essentially a mathematical problem and has a, math, has a numerical value to it. And the understanding in Judaism is that words that have the same, that mathematical value is called a gematria. And words that have the same mathematical value have some kind of a special relationship with one another. Uh, so the word Shiloh has a gematria of 345, which is the same as the gematria for Hashem. And it's also the same as the gematria for El Shaddai. Uh, the phrase Shiloh comes has a gematria of 358, which is a very special gematria because that is the gematria for Messiah, for Mashiach in Hebrew, which is one of the reasons that the Targum paraphrases Shiloh as Messiah, and one of the reasons that the Gemara in the Talmud tells us that, that Shiloh is one of the names of Mashiach. Okay, um, also Moshe has a gematria of 358 because Mashiach is the prophet like Moshe in Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. We'll probably do a whole video on that at some time. And we also recently did a video on the brazen serpent in the wilderness. And um, in that video, we pointed out that the gematria for Nechash, uh, which is serpent, uh, as in the serpent, the brazen serpent that was uh, lifted up on a pole in the wilderness in, in the book of Numbers, uh, we looked at that as a messianic prophecy uh, because, um, among other reasons, because Nechash uh, also has a gematria of 358, uh, representing Mashiach. Okay, let's turn to our next handout, and we're going to see what the Zohar says about Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. In volume 1, page 25, it says, the Zohar says, the scepter referring to the, uh, then it says, referring to the Messiah of the house of Judah and the staff to the Messiah of the house of Joseph until Shiloh comes. This is Moshe, the gematria of Shiloh and Moses being the same, i.e. 358, which we just pointed out. But the Zohar tells us a little bit more here. The Zohar also tells us that the scepter and the staff represent the house of Judah and the house of Joseph. Um, and there are also uh, two, apart from this, uh, there are two comings of the Messiah. The Messiah of the house uh, comes as Messiah ben Yosef and as Messiah ben David, which was the so-called two Messiah theory. 
So, uh, and here it says that the scepter referring to the Messiah of the house of Judah and the staff to the Messiah of the house of Joseph being the two, uh, the Messiah ben Yosef, Messiah lowly and riding upon an ass and Messiah ben Judah who uh, uh, is the kingly Messiah who comes riding upon the clouds uh, and in the role of uh, Messiah ben David. The, uh, the Davidic Messiah, the kingly Messiah. And so uh, Z the Zohar, volume 1, page 25, is here telling us that the uh, Shiloh, i.e. the Messiah of Genesis 49.10, is the Messiah of the house of Joseph, or Messiah bin David, and Messiah of the house of uh, Messiah of the house of Judah. I'm sorry, Messiah bin David, and the Messiah of the house of Joseph, Messiah bin Yosef, and the the staff then reminding us of the shepherd's staff of of Yosef. So that Shiloh then uh, represents the two both roles of the Messiah. Uh, just, and this is an obvious nod to Ezekiel 37 and the two sticks prophecy, where the two sticks represent the two houses of Israel. And they also, therefore, and to a certain extent, allegorically can represent the two roles of the Messiah or the two Messiahs and the two Messiah theory of rabbinic Judaism. But in uh, Nazarene Judaism, we would say just the one Messiah who comes twice with two different roles. And uh, that's supported here by the Zohar passage that indicates that the, uh, uh, the Messiah of the house of Judah and the Messiah of the house of Joseph are one, are the scepter and the staff, like the two sticks of Ezekiel 37 that are held together as one, and they are the one Shiloh, or the one Messiah. Okay, Zohar volume one, uh, the this is also in our handout here. So, so uh, Zohar volume one, page 237 says, the word Shiloh here is spelled with both a yod and a hay. In other words, uh, the, the Hebrew word Shiloh has a yod and a hay in it to allude to the holy supernal name Yah, by which the Shekinah shall rise. So here now, uh, when we bring these these things together, we see that the uh, the two the the scepter and the staff then also represent the letters Yud and Hay, and that the Messiah uh, Ben Yosef and the Messiah uh, Ben David are these two staffs brought together? The staff and scepter are these two sticks brought together. And that they're also uh, Yud and Hay brought together, revealing to us that the Messiah is Yah. Now, if we look at Genesis 49.10 in the Hebrew, if you get a Hebrew, you know, the Masoretic text in front of you, or the, just the Hebrew text in general in front of you, uh, if you look at Genesis 49.10, the phrase, until Shiloh comes, the phrase Shiloh comes and the, the, the Hebrew for, the, for that phrase, for that, for those words. So in other words, starting at Shiloh comes through the word and we have the Hebrew letters Yud, Shin, Vav, Yeshu, which is the uh, Aramaic pronunciation of Yeshua. Uh, and in fact, there are some ancient, um, I won't say ancient, from the Middle Ages, Hebrew translations of the Aramaic Beshita New Testament that translate Yeshua, Yudshin Vav Ayin, in from the Aramaic into as Yudshin Vav in the Hebrew translation, because the Ayin on the end of the word in the Aramaic is silent. Now, of course. Uh, rabbinic Judaism ultimately took hold of this and probably their answer to the fact that the name of the Messiah, Yeshua essentially, is in Genesis 49.10 as a, what's called a notary con. When we take the first letter of each word 
in uh, a passage or in the Torah uh, and to form a word, that's a process we call uh, notary con. And so by virtue of that notary con, uh, the rabbinic uh, Jews responded negatively with their own gematria for Yeshu or their own acronym for Yeshua, for Yeshu, meaning uh, uh, shall the name be blotted out forever or may the name be blotted out forever. Okay. But I believe originally uh, this was probably a response to the fact that this very uh, clear messianic prophecy in Genesis 49.10 where Shiloh has the same numerical value, the same gematria as Messiah, um, and where the Talmud, the Targums, the Zohar all identify it as speaking here of the Messiah, that if we look in the Hebrew, we see Yud Shin Vav, Yeshu there, uh, uh, the, the actual name of the Messiah, uh, as it's pronounced in Aramaic at least. Okay, let's turn to the next page in our handouts. <clears throat> And we're going to look at, uh, we looked a lot at Genesis 49.10, um, the until Shiloh comes prophecy. But the next part of this prophecy says, binding his foal onto the vine and his ass's colt onto the choice vine. He washes his garments in wine and his vesture in the grape of, in the blood of grapes in verse 11, Genesis 49.11. Um, so let's, let's look at this first. This uh, uh, next, so our next handout is titled Binds His Foal Upon a Vine. And note the fact that the figure called Shalo, as I said, binds his foal upon a vine. Clearly the vine is Yosef, um, mentioned a few verses later, that grows over the wall in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. Um, and if we compare that, and we're going to look at, at, at uh, Psalm, well, if we compare that with Psalm 80, verse 8, the wall in question is the sea. Uh, reading uh, Psalm 80, verses 9 through 12, or verses 8 through 11, depending on whether you're using a Jewish version. Um, you did pluck up a vine out of Egypt. You did drive out the nations and did plant it. You did clear a place for it. Uh, and it took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with the shadow of it and the mighty cedars with the bows thereof. She sent out her branches onto the sea or over the sea and her shoots onto the river. And uh, uh, as I said, Genesis 49.10 talks about the branches being sent over the wall, which... Uh, uh, here corresponds to over the sea. So the vine represents Israel and Yosef. Um, turning to our next handout, riding upon an ass, we're going to shift gears a little bit and look at another Messianic prophecy, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, uh, which says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, uh, sh shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king comes unto you. He is triumphant and victorious, lowly, and riding upon an ass, even upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Now, both Matthew and Yohanan cite this as a messianic prophecy fulfilled by Yeshua. And the, the references for that is Matthew 21, verses 1 through 7. And John or Yochanan, uh, chapter 12, verses 14 through 15. We're just going to look at the, the instance in Matthew right here, but you can also look up the one in Yochanan. Um, reading here, it says, And when they came near to Jerusalem and had come to Bet uh, Pegay, to the Mount of Olives, then sent Yeshua to Talmudim and said to them, Go to the enclosure which is before you, and right away you will find there an ass tied and a foal by her side. Loose and bring them to me. 
And if any man says anything to you, they will say that my master has need of them, and immediately he will let them go. And this was to establish what was spoken by the prophet who said, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, poor and riding upon an ass, even upon a foal, the offspring of an ass. Zechariah 9, 9. And the Talmudim went and did as Yeshua commanded them, and uh, brought the ass and the foal, and they put uh, upon them garments, and mounted him thereon. And he rides into Yerushalayim uh, 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 on this ass uh, with the foal. This passage, Zechariah 9.9, is also cited as a Messianic prophecy in the Talmud in, in uh, Sanhedrin, uh, page 98a. It says, Rabbi Alexandri uh, said, Rabbi Joshua opposed two verses. Now, the, the rabbis believe that every letter, much less every word of the uh, Tanakh, was inspired. So when they found two passages that appeared to contradict, there was always uh, was a sign that there was something to be learned here. And there was a rule of hermeneutics, of rabbinic hermeneutics, that said if two passages disagreed, there was some third passage that would resolve the disagreement. So Rabbi Alexandri uh, said, Rabbi Joshua posed two verses. It is written, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, Daniel 7.13. Whilst it is written, behold, your king comes to you lowly and riding upon an ass, Zechariah 9.9. Now, this presents to us a uh, obvious uh, uh, apparent conflict. I mean, how does Messiah come then? Does he come riding upon the clouds? empowering great glory or does he come lowly and riding upon an ass now the answer that we we could present would be uh the messiah comes in two roles messiah ben yosef comes to suffer and die lowly riding upon an ass in zechariah 9 9 and messiah ben david comes riding upon the clouds in power and great glory in daniel 7 13. Uh, the point I want to make here, though, is that simply that the Talmud is citing Zechariah 9.9 as a messianic prophecy. Also, in the Midrash Rabbah, and uh, we have that all these this here in, in your handout, the Midrash Rabbah uh, 85.6, uh, it says, And I have an ox and an ass. Uh, this is referencing Genesis 32.6. It says, the ass refers to the royal Messiah, for it says of him, lowly and riding upon an ass, Zechariah 9.9. So again, the Midrash Rabbah also tells us that Zechariah 9.9 is a Messianic prophecy. So we turn to our next page in our handouts. And I want to start to bring together Genesis 49.10 and 49.11, really, and Zechariah 9.9. <clears throat> and uh, the first passage I want to look at is a statement by Justin Martyr. Now, Justin Martyr was a, a very early so-called church father. Um, and he recounts the story that we, or the uh, material that we quoted from Matthew uh, earlier, uh, uh, that quoted Zechariah 9.9 as a fulfillment of Zechariah 9.9. And he fleshes it out with some additional material. And that's kind of important because there's another place where Justin Martyr is uh, recounting the material in Matthew 3.16, where he fleshes out material. In both cases, he doesn't tell us where this comes from, where this additional information he has salacious privy to comes from. However, in the case of Genesis 39, uh, Matthew 30, 3, 16, uh, in the case of the uh, baptism of Yeshua, the insights that he adds have some, uh, uh, seem to come from the gospel according to the Hebrews. And we did a whole, um, uh, a whole video on the gospel according to the Hebrews or the good news according to the Hebrews uh, 
uh, several months ago. Uh, you might want to go back and, and watch that video. But it was a, uh, it's a lost gospel now, but we have several quotations from it that have survived in the writings of the so-called so -called church fathers and in the margins of manuscripts, etc. And um, uh, we know that uh, Justin Martyr's um, embellishment, if you will, of Yeshua's immersion, that information came from the gospel according to the Hebrews. When we do the comparisons, we can see that. Well, there, it has therefore been suggested that this information that we're about to look at, the additional insight may have come also from the gospel according to the Hebrews. The gospel according to the Hebrews was a lost Jewish gospel that was used by the ancient Nazarenes, the original Jewish followers of Yeshua. So this is uh, Justin Martyr, Apol Martyr, Apology 32. He writes, The prophecy binding his foal to the vine and washing his robe in the blood of the grape, Genesis 49, 11, was a significant symbol of the things that were to happen to Messiah and what he was to do. For the foal of an ass stood bound to a vine at the entrance of a village and he ordered his acquaintance to bring him to him and when it was brought he mounted and sat upon it and entered Jerusalem. So here we have uh, the uh, fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah 9 9 uh, riding upon an ass uh, and the foal of an ass in um, uh, Zechariah 9 9 and uh, Genesis 49 11 binding his foal to the vine and washing his robe in the blood of the grape. Now the Midrash Rabbah also ties these same two verses together in reference to the Messiah. Uh, binding his foal onto the vine, Genesis 49 11, uh, this is in uh, uh, Genesis Rabbah um, 90, 98 9. Takes me a minute to read Roman numerals sometimes. So it says, Binding his foal onto the vine in Genesis 49 11, Rabbi Nehemiah interpreted. Binding or ero onto the vine means he, God, binds to the vine, i.e., Israel. Ero, which alludes to the city, Ha'ir, which, uh, in other words, Ero parallels the word ear, or similar to the word ear, which means city in Hebrew. So there's a, a parallel between, being drawn here, between the word for city, a pun, between the word for city and the word for bind. Um, and it says, and onto the choice vine means morally strong sons will bring from him the rabbis interpret i said god am bound to the vine and the choice vine israel his foal and his colt intimate when he will come of whom it is written lowly and riding upon an ass even upon a coal the foal of an ass zechariah 9 9. He washes his garments in wine, intimates that he, the Messiah, will compose for them words of Torah, and his vesture in the blood of grapes, that he will restore them to their errors. So the Midrash Rabbah also ties these passages together as Messianic prophecy. Now let's look at things again at the Zohar. Uh, volume 1, page 238a. Binding his foal onto the vine, Genesis 49, 11. The vine is the community of Israel, so called also in the verse, you did remove a vine from Egypt. Psalm 80, verse 9. Remember, we were looking at Psalm 80 earlier. By his foal is meant the Messiah. Hence, it is written of him that he will be poor and riding on an ass and on a young ass's coal, Zechariah 9, 9. 
Colt and ass are two crowns by virtue of which the Gentiles have dominion. He rides upon them, an ass and upon a colt, to overthrow the strength of the Gentiles. So here again, the Zohar ties Genesis 49.11, which obviously ties with Genesis 49.10, with Psalm 80 verse 9 and Zechariah 9.9. All of it tying, tying together very neatly. And here I want to mention the anti-missionary uh, uh, anti-missionary, particularly anti-missionaries or counter-missionaries, especially um, uh, Rabbi Singer, have argued that the Gospels misinterpret uh, Zechariah 9.9 and that the, uh, the Hebrew should be understood not that there are two animals, but a single animal that's being called an ass and is also being clarified as a colt, the foal of an ass. Uh, and so uh, Singer says that the Gospels are taking Zechariah 9 9 out of context because uh, they, they can only, it can only be understood as one animal, and Matthew and Yochanan both understand it to refer to two animals. Well, unfortunately for Rabbi Singer, as we just saw, the Zohar also understands Ze uh, Zechariah 9 9 is referring to two animals, not one. So um, uh, Rabbi Zinger's problem has a problem here uh, since the Zohar is making the same sort of interpretation. And then let's, since we talked about uh, Psalm 80 uh, verse uh, nine, uh, you did remove a vine from Egypt and how that also talked about uh, that the vine went over the sea. Uh, let's quickly look at Genesis 49, verses 22 through 26. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine by a fountain, and its branches run over the wall. And in, Gen in Psalm 80, they run over the sea, interestingly. The archers have dealt bitterly with him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode firm and the arms of his hands were made supple by the hands of the mighty one of Yaakov and from there the shepherd the stone of Yisrael even by El by the El of your father who shall help you and by Shaddai who shall bless you with blessings of heaven above blessings of the deep that couches beneath blessing of the beasts and the uh, and of the womb the blessings of your father are mighty beyond the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound by the everlasting hills they shall be they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head and on the prince among his brothers So let's look back at the first page of our handouts real quick. And, um, uh, and going back over this, uh, Yehuda is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, you are gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as a lioness. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. And though there, that's all now very loaded with with symbology and information, we we know that that represents the two comings of the Messiah, or in rabbinic uh, the rabbinic two Messiah theory, the two Messiahs, or we would say the two comings of Messiah, the two roles of Messiah, uh, and uh, the the way in which those two roles parallel the two houses uh, of uh, of Israel. And we see also that they represent the scepter and the staff represent the letters Yud and the letters He, uh, and uh, therefore Yah. And we know that then when it says until Shiloh comes, that Shiloh, that Shiloh is referencing the Messiah. That uh, uh, Shiloh has the same name. Uh, Shiloh comes has the same numerical value as Mashiach. And Nakash, 
the serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness, the brazen serpent, uh, which was also symbolic of Messiah, uh, and of Moshe, which is who was also symbolic of the Messiah because the Messiah was the prophet like Moses, uh, and that um, the rabbinic literature repeatedly identifies Shiloh with the Messiah. And unto him shall the obedience of the peoples be, binding his foal onto the vine. And this now becomes loaded. The vine is uh, Am Yisrael, uh, the assembly of Israel, is also especially Yosef, uh, in, uh, with by spe uh, particularly special interpretation, Yosef. And that, um, uh, that this foal and ass's colt is binding his foal onto the vine and his ass's colt onto the choice vine then also represents the uh, prophecy of Messiah in Zechariah 9.9 where he rides uh, he's presented to Israel riding upon uh, an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass um and he washes his garments in wine and his vesture and the blood of grapes. Uh, I think we can very deeply see the, uh, the, the beautiful Messianic prophecy here about the, uh, the death of the Messiah and uh, uh, our, uh, um, uh, our redemption through the, uh, the blood of the death of the Messiah. So we have here a beautiful Messianic prophecy that ties together uh, Genesis chapter 49 verses 9 through 12 with Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 and um, also with uh, Psalm 80 and uh, it's very uh, very easy to see how uh, this is uh, remarkably speaks of the events of Yeshua and uh, the prophecies that Yeshua as the Messiah filled fulfilled and it's very important then very the, to notice then that where Genesis 49:10 says Shiloh comes starting with the word Shiloh the the three letters of form a notary con Shiloh comes and Yeshu which is the Aramaic pronunciation of the name of Yeshua telling us the very name of the Messiah okay in concluding I just want to remind everybody to please donate to support these videos. I think we have very unique material that you won't find a lot of other places and um, uh, we have a unique work to do. So please continue uh, to, to donate. Uh, donate for the first time if you haven't donated before and you can do that with the donate link in the video description. Like our video, uh, subscribe to this channel help us get up to uh, right now we're trying to reach 3,000 we've got uh, a little over 2,000 uh, we have 2,900 200 and some odd subscribers we're trying to reach 3,000 and uh, so you know help us out with that share these videos on social media let us know what you think of these videos in the comments and uh, until next time shalom everybody